What's good with the YouTube? It's your boy Rojo, Convict's Perspective. I send mine to each and every one of you guys, and uh, hopefully you had a good weekend. Everything's going good on your Monday. And today we're going to talk about James Morado, Jimmy Morado, inmate B86824, better known as Tibbs. Now, Tibbs, you guys all know he's a legend amongst, uh, you know, the the NF, Hente, and, and, and the, the broad umbrella that that group covers. And uh, I'll tell you guys how I met him, man. In 1995, I was in the hole on the six yard San Quentin. And uh, it was me, Porky from Daly City, uh, Javier Zubiati Flacco from Santa Rosa, and a few others, man. And uh, I think I've mentioned this before. We, us three, we, we were all bros at the time. There was no NF members except for the gentleman over in AC, you know, Lopez, uh, Trujeki, them, Cerna, those guys. But uh, so we were, okay, in, in Quentin, the six yard runs the institution. Even though them guys over there in AC, it's, it's ran by the six yard because there's a lot more action at communicating with the, the main line you know, and reception, H unit, etc. So the power in San Quentin is always going to sit on the six yard, even though those guys are, you know, obviously pretty high up there on the COC. Um, they're kind of ostracized in the fact that they're stuck in the adjustment center and communications, very limited. The only way we could really talk to those, those guys was by three-way mail and through the legal law library. You know what I mean? By leaving messages in certain spots, which uh, it's it's not hard to do, but you have to, you have, them individuals have to know where to look. You know what I mean? So it takes a little bit of planning, you know, on your part and their part to be able to intercept any kind of communications back and forth where they won't be at risk of being discovered. So in 95, man, me and, me and Flacco and Porky were all running the yard. We, we decided to share the responsibility, you know, as we were seasoned bros, you know what I mean? But not that seasoned, you know, we just happened to be there at a time where, you know, normally there's a C or two, you know, man, I've been there with seven C's before on the six yard, you know, so normally there's people who can definitely handle the responsibility of running that entire institution. And although we were experienced, we felt it was better if us three shared responsibility equally as to alleviate any kind of pressure, you know, and, and you know, just, just that kind of stuff on one person, you know. So, you know, three minds coming together is better than one, always, you know what I mean, unless one of the minds is dumb. And it's not. We all had experience. Flacco was very well schooled, you know what I mean. And Porky, Porky, Porky was with the business. Like a lot of people, a lot of people don't know who Porky is. You know, and while Porky was kind of, you know, uh, the newer generation guys like Gunner talks about all the time, before his time, he was with it. They're, Porky was with it, man. I've done some things with him, and I can speak firsthand, you know, from our time in Susanville together, that he's he's about it. You know what I mean? So, anyway, we're running the yard and this and that. Well, Flacco's still fighting some kind of case in Sonoma County, so he's going back and forth from court from Quentin to Sonoma County and stuff like that you know he had already been sentenced to 17 with the L or maybe it was 19 it was one it was either 17 with the L or 19 with the L so me and Porky we jump on the bus one day they call us up lit Fisher roll it up you guys are out of here we hit Pelican Bay well we go through that process man go through little metal detectors whatever oh real funny story man on the way up there I think I've said this before as well but I'm not 100% sure if I've talked about it live or not but uh well, we're on their way up there. There was a there was a black brother on the bus. They kept talking, and 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 the the transportation COs do not play whatsoever. There's no play in them, especially on trips to places like the Bay, Corcoran, the Level Fours. You know, what I mean, I've been on buses to like to, to fire camp, like on my first term. Man, we could talk. We weren't cuffed. You know what I mean? It was crazy. But going to Pelican Bay, Corcoran, you know, them kind of places, they're not messing around. So black dude keeps talking. Dude's like, hey, you need to shut the F up and this and that. They'll, they'll, they'll talk to you any way on the buses. And he's like, 
man and word <laughs> my mama don't tell me to shut up and he's like all right well <laughs> we pull into like eureka or yreka or one of them places up there in, in the growing area of california right before you get to the bay and uh man they went up under the bus got his tv his bag and threw it in the garbage at a burger king they ain't playing you leave them people alone they'll, 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 they'll mess you up and then when you get to the institute when, as soon as we got as soon as we pulled up at the shoe they yanked that boy off and took him somewhere and it, it, whatever it was I, i've never seen nobody get like physically abused in pelican bay but uh they they took him somewhere special for a while well anyway they house us in c12 right and uh we move in we go upstairs we're like the second cell from the yard upstairs up top next door to us is little man from salinas little g from dakota below us wino juan gallegos from salas next door to him tibbs and dc so we're in there we're in there chilling you know they they run our name through you know however they were running it you know what i'm saying so about 10 days to two weeks goes by and then uh you know they embrace us don't get me wrong you know what i mean we're on the roll call that we're doing burpees we're doing all that but uh after like two weeks you know uh little g comes up to my door he's like hey just want to let you guys know you guys are clear you came back fine and uh you know you guys have been programming but you know let's just let it know be known it's official you know so much so uh the same day little g's in his cell and we share a vent with him and little man and he's like hey hey rojo let me talk to you so i jump up to the vent and he's like hey what you guys know about the the nuestra familia and i'm like I look at Porky all tripped out. I'm like, man, why is this youngster saying them letters? You know what I mean? Because, you know, I, st I come from the era still where you didn't talk about it unless you were about it. And, you know, a preconceived misconception that a lot of people have is all NF members are 40 years old or more and they got big old brochas. And, you know, you could just tell that's not the case. Both of these dudes were NF members and one of them was already a category two. And there's another misconception that people think that... You have to be a bro, you know, in the, in the, since the, the NR started, that you're going to be a bro before you're going to be NF. And that's also, you know, that's also not accurate. The little man from Salinas was a regular Norteño, and he ended up becoming an NF member before Little G, before me, before Wino, before Porky. So me and Porky are deciding, hey, do we talk to this guy? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that sounds like some pc kind of stuff man like you're trying to set us up man because you shouldn't be talking about that because with our misconception thinking he was too young we almost wrote him off as like a j cat and almost told him hey man don't don't holler at us no more you know which it would have worked out all right anyway because when tibbs came out because he was a tear tender we would have been like hey man this youngster's got some letters in his mouth bro that i don't think he's supposed to have and tibbs would have been like oh no they're they're carnales and we'd have been like oh okay well spencer you know our bad we just anyway <laughs> so we start we decided to go ahead and talk to him anyway just to see what he's talking about after you know a little conversation back and forth between me and porky he's like yeah the the old man you guys know who he is right and i had heard of him you know i hadn't heard of dc to be honest but i had heard of tibbs and uh he's like uh you know who he is and i knew he i knew what he was i knew he was in two letters but i had no idea that you know he was he was a member of the mesa you know what i mean so He's like, well, we refer to him as God. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you know, that, that basically tells me that he's the man. You know what I'm saying? So he relays to Tibbs that we're interested in, in learning more about the NF and this and that. So the next time Unlock comes by, Tibbs comes up to our door. And me and Porky are both right there like, yes, sir. What's up, man? How you doing? Pleasure to meet you. Thanks for letting us, you know, participate in your household, et cetera. You know, showing them the most respect because... <laughs> That's what you do to men like that. You know what I mean? So he's like, hey, so, like, wait, quick story, man. He always acted like he was chewing gum. I don't know if he had gum, but he he was at the door like, he said, hey, Rojo, you know, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to start shooting you guys some stuff. And, you know, hey, one thing, don't ever, don't ever think that you're less because you're not Mexican or nothing like that. And he got into telling me about all the white NF members and how KC was actually fuck a shot caller and this and that he's like you know when you're embraced all that other stuff don't matter we don't care about your race we don't care about where you're from da, 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 da. and this is all stuff i knew already man but he went out of his way to make me feel equal you know show me that carnalismo that equality 
and uh it made me feel a lot better because you know people used to trip you know what i mean like when i became a bro real quick i could see like little looks like i've told you guys before nobody's ever said nothing or treated me out of pocket but there'd be like little funny looks and the, and where i seen it the most is when people would pc up then they'd start getting on you you know so in my opinion they were harboring ill feelings before they pc up because they'd be like yeah F that white dude Rojo. He don't know nothing about the struggle. Doop do doop do doop. You know, so there'd always be that little bit in the back, and you know, it's always been there fester, and it's not something you just made up. But he went out of his way to make me feel welcome, you know, that I was an equal member of the house. Shut up, go lay down. Knock it off. Sorry about that. And uh whatever. So he shoots us uh, a couple articles of the Constitution and um that was that and we we read it and we do a little report whatnot and uh you know he's he's I, I can write you know what i mean like you guys know i don't speak the best but my writing is second to none you know what i mean so as time goes by we break down the you know we got like a, a one about our discipline we got one about objectives stuff like that and there's all kinds of little subsections of it and you know, we break all those down, 500 words or whatever on each one. See, one thing about Tibbs, he was dead serious about his burpees. But uh, as far as the writing goes, he wouldn't even ask for like a certain amount of words. He just wanted to make sure you understood the concept and you could break it down appropriately. You know what I mean? So it wasn't no extra, you know, 1,500 words on each thing. And I don't even think he asked for a number. He's like, hey, break this down for me let me know that you understand it you know and i'm a student you know what i mean i'm if if i was getting graded i got a pluses i wasn't messing around i took it dead serious um a lot of people don't get to see the entire constitution the rules regulations goals objectives etc and the the reason for that is because it's not that they're trying to hide it from you it's just stuff you don't have to worry about. You know, there, there's there's like breakdown. There's a, a section for each each power seat, you know, like the, the Mesa or a captain or a lieutenant or whatnot. And it just breaks down their responsibilities in those positions, right? So you don't necessarily need to know that because until you're that person, until you're coming into one of the positions, it, it's irrelevant. What's irrelevant are the parts that apply to you discipline and conduct your objectives you know everybody comes in as a, just a solado you know what i mean a cat one you know what i'm saying and uh all that other stuff doesn't apply to you because it's just breaking down details of certain positions and, and your responsibilities as such but tibbs let all of us me wino and porky see not only the whole all the chapters but also the streets and we've seen them ever since we've seen them all the way back from the first one all the way until the revised one where we were at in 1995. So that gave us the ability to have a little bit clearer of a picture as to the the goals and objectives of this group. You know what I mean? Like, I understand why they it's the need to know basis kind of thing, because we're really private people, you know, by nature, we're real clandestine. And even amongst each other, you know, so I understand why you don't need to let them see it. And I get it. And I'm fortunate that he either trusted me or he had a, a bigger plan and let me know the whole thing. You know, um, as far as the street, like he was just such an intelligent dude, bro. He would come up, you know, he'd, he'd take care of his little business, taking care of the showers and sweeping and whatnot. And he'd come up and spend, you know, time with me and Porky. And then he'd go downstairs and spend time with Wino just talking about, you know, concepts and, and theories and stuff like that. And with his extensive military background, you know, being in Vietnam as in special forces, you know what I mean? He, he had some very cool theories, man, that not only involved what we do, you know, as far as criminal activities... But also theories from the military about discipline and conduct and, and how to carry yourself and you know just man he was a walk he was a he was a walking encyclopedia about life man and I've said this before he was he was a brilliant brilliant man like he could be a college professor somewhere like if if he knew things about like say physics like he does about our lifestyle he'd be he'd be a, a Nobel prize winner or something, you know, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. But, uh, bro, every time he came to my cell, I was all 
100% attention, focus, bro. And he was such a good man, just a cool dude, you know? And, and he's with it, too. Not only is he smart, man, but I know about some of the things he's done in his past. You know, I think I've mentioned when when he was doing a pagata and they, were, they just kept repeatedly shooting him with the gauge. He didn't stop till he felt like he was done. He didn't care about no bird shot. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, like like uh, Sundown had said from the, the time that he came into the system, he was destined for leadership and everybody knew it. I agree. I mean, I, I could I could see that 100 percent. And he's a natural born leader. Uh, he has the charisma, you know, the intelligence. He's uh, personable. You know what I mean? And he's 100 percent dedicated to the oath he took. There is no no ifs, ands or buts or nothing like that. His resume has been flawless since he came into the system. I mean, you guys that have done time, you know, B86824, that's an old number. You know what I mean? Uh, I could I could look it up specifically, man, but that's not really my thing is to look up numbers and dates and all that stuff. My, my What I do is I tell little stories from my experience, but uh, it's, it's from the 70s, bro. You know, and, and everybody knew he was going to be a leader and he he steadily climbed the road. Man, he's been, he's been in a power position since the 80s. You know what I mean? Like, he ascended quick. He came in the system in the late 70s. Man, he's been running the show for a long, long time. He's in the feds, you know, still doing his thing. You know what I mean? Out there in Kentucky. You know, you know, people people in over years have had bad things to say about such and such, such and such, such and such. I'm not going to lie to you. I have never, ever heard anybody, even the real degenerates who talk mad stuff, have ever anything bad to say about Tibbs. You know, just because he's cool, man. He taught me a lot of stuff, man. And, and part of my part of my personality and character as an adult is directly reflected on a lot of the things I've, I've learned from that guy. You know what I mean? About just how to act, man. How to conduct yourself. How to, you know, represent yourself to the fullest. You know what I mean? How to, you know what I mean? Just basic things about, like, because I was young, man. Like, you guys know, man. You know, I was 19, 20 years old when I met him. You know what I mean? So a lot of his influence, man, was more like fatherly or unclely than than any kind of gang stuff. You know, and a lot of a lot of people, they know how to go to the streets and, and get money. You know what I mean? That's not hard. If you have any kind of hustle, if you have any kind of motivation to do so, you could go out on the streets and get money. The the things that we would participate in as a group, we called them ventures. You know what I mean? And there's quite a few of them. I'm not going to break them down or nothing like that specifically, man. But, I mean, you guys know it's typical criminal group stuff. Okay, people tend to look at things like, okay, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. What he was able to get us to understand, which a lot of people don't to this day because I know a lot of C's from, you know, way older than me that couldn't quite get it. You know what I'm saying is you can incorporate all those things and there's ways to get them to, to move in one fluid motion together as one instead of like, okay, I'm going to go out there and slang. I'm going to go out there and rob. I'm going to go out there and do this and that. There's ways to establish each one of those things so they enhance each other. And it's just really complicated thinking. It's real complex, man. It's like, you know, it's like the hierarchy of a company, you know, getting, you know, your, your, your human services, getting your district managers, getting this and that. What's well, the same thing with all these different things that we would involve ourselves in getting all those things to complement each other at the same time, you know, and man, he, he had a way of explaining things that even somebody who's not that bright could be like, oh, I, I get that now, you know, and, and he was just a great teacher, bro, you know, and, and, you know, I'd chop it up with them all the time, man, when I came out, man, and instead of, you know, taking a 20 minute shower or whatever after my yard, Man, I try to whip through the shower real quick and go over and holler at him in D.C. Now, D.C. was a lot more quiet of a dude. He didn't he didn't speak too much. You know what I'm saying? But but Tibbs was down to, you know, ask any answer, any question you might have or whatnot. And I don't know, man. Like, like when I when I when I decided to, to disassociate myself, the first thing I, I thought about was, man, this dude's going to be disappointed in me, man. You know what I mean? And that's like the only person that I feel that way about just because the impression he made on me as, a, as just a, a cool, cool dude. And, uh, he's one of them guys too, that if something's down to, that needed to be handled on the yard, even as what he is, he'll go out there and, 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 
he'll have something in his hand. I promise you, he, he's not playing. And 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 you know his his work ethic, bro. He was 48 years old when I met him. Like I'm 46 now, right? He told us, man, all right, today's machine, we're going to warm up with 122 counts. And me and Porky looked at each other like, warm up? This dude was tripping. He was dead serious. He, <laughs> that was a grown man. You know, he was grandfather age. And he was knocking out. You, you, If he wanted to do burpees all day, that man would have done burpees all day. You know, we've done 322 counts and then... 500 push-ups and then 100 mountain climbers and 500 jumping jacks like i don't know like some if he was in a bad mood some days man i remember 322 counts bro it was it was ruthless bro you know what i mean and he was right there with us he wasn't oh, okay you guys do this and nah man he he was with it man everything about that dude was legit and just like Sundown said, natural leaders, bro, he would have been a leader at anything he chose to do in life because anything he put his mind to, he would accomplish. You know, that's just the type of dude he is. And he's he's straight with the business, too. You know, a lot of people, you know, you know, Corny's going to come up and Skip's going to come up. And man, man, I know some stuff about Tibbs that nobody else knows, you know, that I can't really put out there. Same thing, though. There's when this is what you need to do bam it's done to the fullest you know what i mean but tibbs man as far as far as people i've encountered throughout all my prison time bro that would be my highest level of respect the most i've learned from anybody and the biggest influence on my life both as a member and as just a human being on the streets as as a man you know it's it's that that is a true believer of that cause 100 percent, and that's a true man of his word and that's a true if 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 he's down for you he's down for you you know what i'm saying like you know when i had that little issue with with dancing bear trying to trying to basically extort information from me that was that had nothing to do with him that i know i wasn't supposed to say i had to shoot a letter and be like hey you know th this is what's going on couple of weeks go by all of a sudden hey rojo you know i just want to apologize you know what i mean like like he had your back you know people trying to flex on you like i always had that ace in the hole you know and and i would use it too i wasn't i wasn't tripping on using it people would be trying to tell me something that i know is not right i'll be like well let me go ahead and get it at my channel and i'll get back to you asap who's your channel tibbs oh oh oh, oh never mind you know all of a sudden you know what i mean because they knew you don't you don't want to ruffle that dude's feathers bro because one thing i always did was i did things appropriately i followed instructions you know what i mean i did what i was told like a soldier is supposed to you know what i'm saying so i know whatever i do will be approved you know whether you know like that time i had to deem what's his name from oakland for running off with some work i wasn't supposed to do that because it, it takes a you know, a conglomerate of people to deem another a fellow member. You know, we're talking about Anthony Jacobs. But uh, I was like, hit that fool on sight. You know, because I knew you cannot do that. You just stole from, from, from the group as a whole. You stole from Tibbs. You stole from DC. You stole from me. You stole from Mike. And blatantly, you know what I mean? And uh, so we went, we, we kicked his door in. We tried to get him. He wouldn't know. He, he had got away somehow, but, uh, you know, I took that upon myself because I knew in the end I would be justified and it was a risk, but I know that dude and I know that it would be cool. And I knew that he would support me 100% because there's no, there's no talking your way out of like, oh, well, I lost it. Now you stole it straight up point blank. Anyway, I kind of ramble like I usually do, but uh, I'm just saying, as far as in NF history, you know, I've spent time with Corny, and Corny's a good dude too, man. Straight with the business, straight 100% believer, you know, but influentially on me because I spent, you know, a year and some change with him, you know. After me and Porky weren't Shelly's no more, I moved right down. I'm, I had moved over to go sit with Corny for a while in, in his pod with Boxer from Selma and Lucho, and, you know, I was upstairs, and uh, I didn't have a Shelly at the time. I was over there for like a month and a half, and then Tibbs brought me back over. And uh, I sell up at Wino, and we were right next door, man. So we chop it up all day, man. And uh, man, a, a lot of the person I am about my my seriousness about handling things, and you know the way I present myself, and 
you know, the way I try to, to try to do things in life, man, that's a direct reflection of things that that dude taught me. You know what I mean? That, that he instilled in me. And if you're looking for a true representative that, that you know, from, from that group, as far as just being 100% about that and a prime example and, and like a number one guy, it's James Morado, Tibbs from San Jose with the business mentally physically just <laughs> can't say enough about him but uh you know yeah he was a bank robber you know he's a vietnam vet he'll book you you know what i'm saying but he'll teach you and he'll be fair and he's got a great sense of humor and he'll make you laugh you know what i'm saying but in nf history bro he's he's on the mount rushmore there's no doubt about it anyway man just a quick little spill on tibbs but some other kind of random stuff man hope you guys have a good day maybe i'll go live tonight if i don't go live tonight i'll go live tomorrow but uh man it was real nice to see the work in xcon you know over the weekend man i hope you guys enjoyed that live we had to erase it because uh flacco had a, a a bad word on his shirt and youtube really trips and since we didn't bring the computer we only had the phones we couldn't edit it it was it was just a bad situation man but hopefully we could do it again um I got some things coming up, hopefully too, with the with a homeboy that that ended up going to be a, a a writer and then went back to being a regular dude. And he's a good dude. I know him. You know what I mean. I done time in the hole with him. Um, try to get him interviewed real soon. But you know, if I don't see you guys live tonight, I'll see you live tomorrow. Man, this boxing match is going down. We I'm gonna we're gonna sit down with them other gentlemen from down the way way tomorrow at six and work out the last final details man but it's locked in june 26 both gentlemen are, are are getting their training in and it's gonna be a good thing we got some undercards coming up you know what i mean when we got you know more information on that we'll drop it but uh it's gonna be a cool couple hour event you know we're gonna do our best to bring it to you as professionally as possible and it's gonna be cool, man. I'm excited, bro. Gunner's excited. Them gentlemen down there are excited. Cholo Trucker's getting his training in. Gunner's doing his. And uh, I know I ramble, my bad, y'all. But have a good day. And uh, if I don't see you live, I'll see you soon. Much love and respect.